Hi there, I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to my studio. Now we just finished a workshop on old boats as you can see behind me and we just had one on the weekend which was this one up here where we discussed values and why values are important and how it helps to add to a painting and give your subject some depth. Now, a couple weeks ago, we did a painting about harmonizing color, and that was with flowers. Now, what we did there was actually uh, some problem solving and how to unify areas. But what I found absolutely fascinating with this class is because this was the, the project that, we're, that we were going to work on. And it's a painting that I love. We work with different brush strokes and how to simplify and uh, get the effect that we want. But what was fascinating in this workshop is that depending on where you placed the shadow, like if you took the shadow here and brought it up a little bit more, your boat really appeared flat. Even though the uh, angle didn't change, if you extended the shadow, it just made everything flat. And then using this idea, uh, I know what it looks like. I know that this is supposed to be water up here, but a lot of people thought that that was supposed to be maybe the sky. And that is possible. It really depends on the viewer's perspective. It could be a fog bank. It could be something like that. But what if we changed it? Because this actually kind of stumped me in the workshop where I thought, how can they not know that it's water? But the very important lesson here was if you look at this one above, just by changing and adding a horizon line or maybe adding a darker sky, and in some paintings what they did was have a lighter sky and a darker ocean, it just added, <coughs> excuse me, added even more depth. It just made it even more interesting. So we're not necessarily locked into what you see all the time. Use that as a guide and then work with what you have and then see where the painting wants to go and how to develop it. So let me show you what I did. Okay, so this is our original painting that we're working on or that we did. This was the focus of our workshop. And then we worked through the lessons and I liked having this area back here as water. But if I decided I wanted to change it, so if we took like an older painting, which I have here, something like this, and maybe turn this upside down just to get a concept of what it might look like with that dark, dramatic, intense color, what's going to happen is this boat's going to pop forward. Now, we still need to have the ropes in there and all the other little detail. And if I use a little test strip of color, like you can see right over here, this will give me some idea. I don't want that bloom there. It'll give me some idea if it's not as intense and where I might want a horizon line and why I like that idea and I find it very interesting for this particular lesson is because it really changes where the attention goes. Here, this is nice. I could go darker back here if I want to create more contrast or if I just change perspective by having that, or, you know, the, um, the composition by having that ocean back here. And what's going to be the easiest way for me to change it? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, I may like it and I may not like it, but let's see. So I'm going to get some indigo into this. What I'm trying to decide is where I want my horizon line. Okay, if I go darker down there, how much sky do I want? Either way, even if I don't like it, I can always scrub it out a little bit. Let's go ahead, bring it into a French ultramarine blue uh, burnt sienna blend. And I have a little bit of indigo. And if I take too much time, I'm going to end up with lines that I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop this in. Okay. 
and I'm moving the paper around because I don't want it to stick in a way that I may not like. Now I have water so it's very soft but if I want that hard line I don't think I want it to be that dark so I'm going to add a bit more water. I'll put that there for a second. This has a straight line. I'm going to go ahead and line that up. Get more water. Water there. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's giving me an idea. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And I'm not being very careful. And I probably should be more thoughtful as I'm doing this. I'm going to get some water in here. Move it around. I don't want that to compete right there. So I may just soften this area right there. I don't want that line to be so hard. But now I have a better idea. I don't like that going around like that. I might try to bring that down a tiny bit. And I did not really take my time to do this. I just wanted to see what it would look like. I think this is really fascinating and I should continue that over on this side. I really like how it changes the composition. I'm going to go ahead and put a paper towel right here. Try to dry that spot. I can always lift that out with a uh, magic eraser. I don't know if I want that line to be too hard. The paper is um, buckling there, so I've got to be careful with that. I'm going to try to soften that line. I'm taking a damp wash brush, remove the extra water, and then I'm just going to try to soften that line just a little tiny bit. I want it to be there, but I didn't want that to stand out too much. And I'm not happy with this area over here, so I want to fix that. And I don't have indigo anywhere else in my painting, so I know I really shouldn't have done that, but I wanted to. So now I have the French Ultramarine Blue Burnt Sienna Blend, and I'm going to try to allow that to meander on down. And I do like that a little crawl up there. I think that's an interesting sky. And if it's not moving the way I might like, or I'm not really going to try to control it so much, but I might not like the movement of it, I'll add a bit of the uh, water with a spray bottle. And I have to babysit it while it's still wet. And I wouldn't have even tried this if we didn't do the workshop here because I know how I expected it to be and I think that this is fascinating. I'm going to let this run over to the side and by not attaching it to a board I'm able to um, really fold my, well not really fold, but curl my paper. This area is a problem. This is dry, this is wet. I'm going to have a bloom here so I have to watch out for that. And I think the colors are interesting. I'm going to dry this so I can evaluate it with the rest of the painting. I'll try to. I'm just going to clean up this line a little tiny bit. Light touch.
Okay, so now since I have a little bit of that indigo, I don't have it anywhere else in my painting. So can I bring that in somewhere else? I think that's fascinating back there. I need to tone this down. So maybe what I can do is take, uh, I have my color mixture that has just a tiny bit of that indigo in there. Let's see, can I go ahead and glaze over this? What I did in the original lesson was just fill these in, but I'm gonna tone it down over this. I think that's interesting. I don't wanna lose all those lights over here. What I could do is try to bring them out a bit more by just going around them. And I think it really just changes the entire composition. I mean, we have these possibilities and options of things we can do. I think this is fascinating. Now this needs more detail. And we have our boat over here. I need to add more detail in that area, but I think I wanna push that back. So I'm going to glaze over that. I don't wanna to go too dark, but I'm also trying to incorporate some of this color into other areas of the painting. Can I get away with that? I can always come back in with more detail. And I'm just deciding if I like that or not. And I'm trying to decide, do I want to do any more, maybe just a stroke or two, but I do want to get those ropes in. So what I really like about what we've done here is, I mean, it really blows my mind <laughs> that this, is, this was the goal of our workshop. And then to see how that can completely change is amazing to me. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get those ropes in here. We'll finish up with all of that. And uh, I need to let this dry. I'm amazed. I'm happy to be amazed. <laughs> and the original angle of the water was the waves coming in this way. But what if I try to break this up a little bit with some smaller strokes? I'm, I'm just worried about doing too much. I think this is kind of nice having that lighter area there. I don't want to go too dark there. We have the dark sky. I, I'm very happy with just the change of perspective. We're going to get the ropes in. And then I think I would sit with it for a while to decide if I wanted to do anything. It really depends on what kind of cloud cover is, is uh, there that day. And do I want to have the sky a different color or do I want it to be more neutral or do I want to keep it more blue like that? I'm going to leave that alone. I could come in and add a bit more detail down here, but it's nice to take a moment and take your time and do that. This could use more detail and contrast, but it just takes time. So I'm going to let this dry for a second and then I'll come in with my ropes and uh, finish that up. Now that's a really wonderful way of problem solving. I mean, just, I was thrilled with this one and now I'm thrilled with that one. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that helped give you a better idea of how you can change a painting just by a simple line or a stroke of color. So until next time, have fun and happy painting.